Hey, what's up guys? Today I'm going to do a review on the GBOS GDR15 DAS. The DAS is stand for Dynamic Action System. Mine is the CQB version. Um, fun fact, uh, the upper receiver is the Gen 2 version and the lower receiver is the Gen 1 version. Uh, I did not do any modification like the hop-up unit, the inner barrel, uh, and the hop-up bucking on the upper receiver. So therefore, I'm gonna treat this gun like a stock gun. So you can pull down all the spec from GBS, GDR, uh, GBS website from whether you're gonna look it up on the UK version or the US uh, website. So, so here's probably the spec that you want to look for is the inner barrel. The inner barrel of the stock GBOS GDR15 is 275 millimeter. The hop up bucking is an AEG hop up bucking. The hop up unit is a WA Western Arm GNP hop up unit. The inner barrel di um, diameter is 6.04 millimeter. The outer barrel is a Western Arm WA GNP outer barrel, which is 10.3 inch for the CQB version and a 14 and a half for a carbine version. Uh, I bought a strip upper. But if you're gonna buy a whole rifle from GBS themselves, you probably, or EVI, you probably receive the Centurion Arm, the PTS Centurion Arm um, scrap. Uh, the barrel nut is an AEG spec barrel nut. So if you want to, to change it to a Mark 18, Mark 12, or any kind of um, after market route, you can do it so with ease. Uh, but if you want to use a BCM or a Geisler rail, you could purchase an AEG spec uh, barrel nut for the uh, Geisler or BCM rail from GBOS themselves. All you need to do is um, send them an email or Facebook, Facebook messages, and they're probably gonna, gonna respond. The GBO, uh, the uh, Geisley Rail GBOS Barrel Nut is $50 and the BCM one is $30. The battery they recommend you using for the GBOS GDR15 is an 11.1 volt 25C discharge light bulb battery. Uh, you cannot use 7.4 volt battery or a 14.2 volt battery. So they're not recommending you using the 7.4 volt battery because it will not have enough juice for the gun to cycle correctly. You shouldn't use a 14.2 volt battery because it's gonna be way too much juice going through the motor, probably gonna fry it and fry the electronic inside. The charging handle, the charging handle, you can use the WA PTW charging handle for a Gen 1 upper receiver. But for the second generation, the second gen upper receiver, they modify it so you can use a real steel AR-15 style charging handle. You can also use a real AR charging handle with a Gen 1 upper receiver but there's a little bit of modification on the front end of the um, in order for the charging handles to sit correctly into the gun. So here's what you should expect from a GBOS GDR15 out of the box. You're gonna have one single uh, speed loader adapter. You need this piece in order to lower the mag. If you lost it, uh, you should contact GBOS to purchase another one because you prop it it hard or maybe impossible to load a Mac without the speed loader adapter. 
Um, you get one metal mag. The metal mag is shorter than the gas blowback mag and the PTW mag, but it is the same length as the. No, no, it's not the same length. A little bit longer than the normal AEG mag. And the mag is proprietary. Uh, you're gonna get a warranty paper, one hop up tool, which is just a normal Allen key, and um, the GBS GDR15 uh, themselves. They will not come with any of the accessory, but they will come with the PTS uh, enhanced grip and PTS enhanced stock. Um, so what else? They will, if you are living in the US, you're probably going to receive a plastic orange flash hider, but they do include a metal black bird cage, black uh, flash hider in, in the packaging. So here's come the price. Um, the price for a GBOS GDR15 is $1,700. If you buy from the main website from New York, you need to pay New York tax on top of uh, the um, plus the uh, cost of the rifle should bring up the um, pricing of a gun to $2,000. But lucky for you, you can buy the rifle directly from Evite. At least right now, it's on sale and the cost of the rifle is $1,500. Uh, for the carbine version and fourteen hundred dollar for uh, CQB version. One of these mag, one of the GBS mag is forty dollar. You, you could buy a pack of five from GBS themselves, but they're gonna cost you two hundred dollar. Just um, just keep in mind. All right. So after I have this gun four years and a half. Uh, I decided to buy the uh, plain upper CQB upper receiver, but the original um, carbine upper receiver, I have a Prometheus 6.03 in the barrel. I hopped it with the GNG green bunking modifier to um, work with a hop. Um, with a hop, I can use uh, heavier BBs like. 3.2 to 3.6 gram uh, BBs, but for the stock uh, setup, like stock hop up unit setup, I could easily use uh, uh, 2.8 gram to uh, 3.0 gram BBs easily. In uh, I can say it effectively reach target uh, roughly 200 feet. Another modification that I have in this um, low receiver is I put a bad mag pull lever in there so it could assist me with the reload. Um, to outfit the bat lever into the um, bow catch, I need to shave the bat lever, like um, the inside of the bat lever, in order it to fit the um, GBS GDR uh, bow catch because the um, GBS GDR bow catch is a little bit bigger than the normal AR style real steel AR 15 bow catch. All right, so we're getting close to the end of video, so I'm gonna talk about the pro, the con, and what I found during my two years and a half usage of the gun. So the, pr the pro, the recoil of the gun is kind of like a 22. Uh, you could modify the buffer and buffer spring in order to have a stronger um, recoil, but it will damage the sear. Uh, there's no mag cool down like a gas blowback mag. Uh, you could run the gun all day long as long as as you have extra battery for it. Um, the mag is lighter than the GB mag, G GBB mag and the same weight as the AEG mag so it will line up your kit and you don't need to get weighed down by the GBB mag. Um, the gun is loud, it's very very loud. Sometimes it scares people. Um, I've been playing with a gun for so many times. When I turn around the corner and take a couple pop shots of one target, usually the second target will call it. 
even sometimes even though I'm not hitting the guy. So the gun is really, really, real loud. All right, so let's get to the con of the GVS GDR15. So the gun is very expensive at a price tag of $1,700, and is not meant for a normal average airsofter. This gun is kind of market and tailoring toward a niche museum event. Um, professional training and ta tactical law enforcement um, agency. So this gun is meant for training, but you could use it for airsoft. Um, the mag is very expensive, and they only hold 40 rounds, and it costs you forty dollar to buy one mag. I've seen a lot of people did modification to the mag in order to put a real mag pro mag in there uh, all kind of out of shell all right so part of proprietary you cannot fix the gun at all if the low receiver any cap sear any kind of thing break the only thing you are able to do is to send this back to GBH for them to fix it like lubricant the gun uh, check on all the screw on the bolt carrier group and tighten it up Make sure the nozzle is sitting in place and tighten it down That's all you need to do for the GBS GDR15 Also, also you should check the um, fuse in the uh, wiring from the back The trigger, the trigger is heavy um, I have people from the US Army, the U US Airborne, the US Marine, um, law enforcement, they, they all pick up the gun and try to play with it and, and try to play with it. And I see almost every single person complain about the trigger pull on the um, GBS, GDR 15 lower, Gen 1 lower, and Gen 2 lower. So maybe GBOS is gonna come out with the light trigger. Maybe I don't know, but they could improve on the trigger. Um, all right, for the hop up unit, um, the hop unit is a pain in the ass to adjust. Uh, you need to use an Allen key to put in. Um, So the hop of units is a pain in the ass to adjust. Um, you need to use an Allen key that they provided, but I'm pretty sure the Allen key is a 2.5 Allen key. Stick it in the upper receiver and adjust it. Uh, you need to take a bolt carrier group out, so there should be no quick adjustment on the field. So that is gonna be my um, downfall of the gun. But beside that, uh, if you tune it in, if you adjust this correctly, you shouldn't do anything. If you adjust it to your preferred BB weight, you're just gonna leave it forever. You don't need to mess with it at all. All right, so what I found within the uh, two years and a half, only the GBS GDR15, is there was a rumor on the internet, or the GBS GDR group, Stated that if you're using an airsoft scope, you're gonna ruin your airsoft scope or red dot. Uh, it is not true at all. You can use any kind of scope that you want, un unless you're gonna hold a full auto trigger down for like nine magazine non stop, like their testing video. If you just have it like a normal usage, it's not gonna be a problem. You're not gonna damage it. You're not gonna lose zero, so don't worry. GBS mag been, GB, GBB gun been out there for a while and you don't hear anything about it. Yeah, the gun is losing zero, the gun is damaging my sight. No, it's just a myth. Um, another problem is even though the GBS GDR15 is using the WA and GNP uh, hop up system for the 
their GBB. The upper receiver is not comparable. Let me take it out. Because I was originally want to make another upper for my GBS. GBS GL15 because I thought, oh yeah, they're using the same out of barrel, they're using the same hop up unit. Maybe they use the same uh, upper receiver, but as you can see right here, they cut differently. The GBS GDL15 is wider and they and compared to the GNP one. So you cannot use a GNP GBB uh, playing upper receiver to build another uh, GBS upper receiver. If you want another up, upper receiver, um, the only way for you to have one is to contact, contact GB, GBS and uh, purchase another one. Uh, another myth that I came apart, uh, came across is the um, Magpul bat lever will ruin your gun. Uh, it is not, you can, I have my on forever. Um, the only thing you should put to, into the account is to fit the bat lever. It's not, um, Alright, another myth is I heard people said you cannot use bat lever, the Magpul bat lever in the GBS GDL15 because it will ruin the sensor and the everything in the low receiver. I'm gonna say they are a bunch of crap and I have mine on since forever. Uh, the only thing you need to take consideration is to make sure the spring the original spring inside the bolt catch replaced with another type of spring that can counter the new added weight to the um, from the uh, bat lever. Also, you need to shave the bat lever because the GBS GDR15 uh, bolt catch is a little bit bigger than normal AR. So that should be it for the video. I hope this video is, is more clear than the um, original video. Um, if you guys have more more questions, let me know down in the co comment section below and I would happy to answer a couple of them. Um, yeah guys, so thank you for watching my videos. I'm at 99 subscriber right now. So I'm thank you for your support and um, Hopefully I can get this channel grow and um, yeah, thank you for you guys support and I hope this video help you guys with the uh, purchase decision and um, Yeah, hope you guys see you guys soon. All right. Thank you